Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Gwen Rees. I'm from the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom. And first, an apology. I know this is internal medicine. I'm just going to talk about medicine and not so much the internal stuff. Um, but this is where I was put, and it's been really interesting so far. Um, so I'm talking a little bit this morning about a small part of my PhD, which has been about understanding veterinary medicine use, prescription veterinary medicine use on UK dairy farms. This talk's going to be more about the veterinary medicine storage and the ways of measuring use that we have available to us. So a quick background on the UK dairy industry for those who aren't familiar. At the time of this study, we had around 1.9 million dairy cows, mostly Holstein Frisians, um, producing about 14.6 billion litres of milk a year. So pretty productive herds for the most part in the UK. Um, as in many other countries in the world, prescription veterinary medicines are prescribed by vets to farms for animals which are under that vet's care. The farmers can then store these prescription medicines on their farms and use them at their own discretion at a later date, which means that for the most part, prescription veterinary medicines and antimicrobials are being used in the absence of the prescribing veterinary surgeons. So we don't actually really know much about what the farmers are doing with the medicines that we prescribe to them. Which brings us a few challenges, and that's the reason that we started this, um, this study. It's been shown there was a government report by Buller and others in 2015. The current data on how medicines are being used in the UK is really lacking. There's a massive knowledge gap there. We haven't got any estimates of the accuracy of vet sales data to use that as a proxy for medicine use, despite the fact that the government is now moving towards using veterinary sales data as a proxy for use. No one's worked out if that's accurate or not. Um, the same with on-farm medicine records. So all of our farmers are required to keep treatment records for every animal on their farm. There's a wealth of information there, but we've never really looked at the quality of that information. It's not being used for purposes other than farm assurance currently. And I think most importantly, we have no data on what medicines are being stored on farms. If farmers are making most treatment decisions in the absence of the vet, those treatment decisions are going to be really based on the physical resources those farmers have available to them. If, unless they're going to call the vet out or drive to the practice to pick something up, they're going to use the medicines they've already got stored on the farm. So that's going to really affect treatment decisions. We thought we'd look into that. So the research aims for this part were to determine on-farm prescription veterinary medicine storage and to compare veterinary sales data, on-farm treatment records and medicine waste bins um, against a predetermined gold standard that I will explain a little bit about. A little bit about the study farms. So this can really only be seen as a kind of a scoping study or a pilot study. It's the first of its kind and we had 27 farms. Um, UK dairy farms. We had a median total herd size of 320 cows with 175 cows in milk, which is slightly bigger than the UK average, but not by much. And they were producing around 1.1 million litres of milk per year, which is about 7,500 litres per cow per year. Um, again, that broadly reflects the UK average. Um, and the, as you can see, there are some other farm characteristics there, but in general, these 27 farms did reflect the wider industry at the time. So this is the United Kingdom, for those who haven't seen it, and within that circle is where our research farms were. I'm based at the University of Bristol, which is pretty much in the middle of that circle. Um, these 27 farms were purposively selected. So recruitment was done via um, approach to veterinary practices and nomination of farms for purpose of selection to reflect quite a broad range of different management types, different farm sizes, different breeds, different production systems and production aims. So with this first research aim, determining on-farm prescription veterinary medicine storage, um, <laughs> Yes, you can see some excellent farm records on the, on the bottom right there. That's pretty classic. Um, we basically performed a cross-sectional study of all of the prescription veterinary medicines stored on these 27 UK dairy farms. So I 
went in the autumn of 2016 to each of these 27 farms for a single visit and basically recorded every single medicine that I could find on that farm. So mostly we were asking the farmer, where's your medicine cupboard? Can I look in your medicine cupboard? But also, can I have permission to look everywhere else on the farm, in your car, in the box on the back of the quad bike, and in the fridge in the house, in the cupboards in the house? The farmers were fantastic and really receptive to this, which was quite a surprise. Um, and yeah, we found medicines all over the place, but I recorded um, data on the quantity, what was being stored, what the expiry dates were, whether it was labelled, and where these medicines were being stored across these farms. So a little bit about the storage locations. Um, medicines were stored in a real variety of locations. In the UK, farmers are supposed to store prescription veterinary medicines in a lockable medicine cupboard or refrigerator based on the data sheet um, recommendations. So they should be either in a lockable room or there should be a padlock on that cupboard. We had about 63% of medicines being stored correctly according to those guidelines in a cupboard. Um, we had some in the house refrigerator, some on farm refrigerators, a lot in unsecure locations and calf sheds and in the milking parlour as well. But yeah, we, we were finding medicines all over the shop. And there was quite a broad variation in how these medicines were being stored as well. In, this is a picture of one of the very organised medicine cupboards. Um, there were some farms which were not organised. They were just mountains in the corner of used and unused and expired medicines, so there's quite a broad range between these different farms. So I think it's important to look at antimicrobials, um, just with antimicrobial resistance being such a huge, um, huge topic. We looked at the total stored antimicrobials across these farms corrected for the weight of the animals on the farm as measured by population corrected unit. And as you, I think you can probably see, when we corrected for stock numbers, it showed that there's a huge variation in the amount of antimicrobials farmers are storing. It doesn't seem to be that dependent on how many animals they have. And as you can see to the far right, some farms are storing up to five times as much as those who are storing that, the minimal amounts on the left there. We also looked at it uh, corrected for production data. So we looked at the total number of milligrams of antimicrobials stored per thousand litres of milk per year and again you can see it's a little bit more um, more of a straight line until we've got a couple of farms at the end that are really storing a huge amount that doesn't really seem to correct for. Um, we also as you can probably see uh, we've split out the critically important antimicrobials. We used the European Medicines Agency definition which doesn't include macrolides but most farms at this time in 2016 were storing critically important fluoroquinolones or third and fourth generation cephalosporins. So, yep, 63% of farms were storing their medicines correctly, um, but we had 90% of farms almost storing these critically important um, antimicrobials, which is really important if we're going to be trying to reduce the use of HPCIAs on farms. We need to know that, well, our farmers have probably got a cupboard full of them. Um, so when, we, when it comes to health planning, maybe start to talk about that. And almost three quarters of farms had expired medicines on farm. This was probably not a big surprise to anyone who's been on a farm, but we did have a farm that was storing some vaccine that was over 16 years out of date. <laughs> the average um, expiry was about one year out of date from that that was printed on the side of the bottles. Um, I'll briefly go through research aim two as well. So we were comparing veterinary sales data, on-farm treatment records, medicine waste bin audits against a gold standard. So this began with that initial inventory, the cross-sectional study. We then, we did lose a farm who sold up and went out of dairy. So this is from 26 farms um, where we did an initial inventory and then for a year we measured vet sales data, on-farm treatment records and used medicine audit bins. We defined the gold standard for these farms' use as the day one inventory, so every medicine they had on their farm, plus every medicine they purchased during that 12 months, minus every medicine they had on the last day of the study. So we thought that was the only way we could capture as much of the medicines that had been used as possible. That's still subject to a few errors, um, depending on if medicines are being sourced unofficially and things like that. 
So you might have read about bin audits. There are several studies that have used them to measure medicine use, but um, we were aware that no one had really validated it, particularly for the UK dairy industry. We placed bins on farms and asked farmers to throw away every empty prescription veterinary medicine packet, so tubes, bottles, packages, into these bins once they'd finished with them. I visited every three months to every farm, collected the bins, counted up the contents and recorded that. And then we also looked at medicine records and veterinary sales data at the end of the year. These medicine records came in a huge variety of different formats, so you'd have some really good computerised um, computerized records and some records which were scribbled on the side of the bottles and then the bottles were thrown in the corner and that's how they knew which cows had had what. So it took, some of it took a lot longer than other bits. This is very preliminary data. Unfortunately, we thought we'd have more data for you today, but um, the sort of regression modelling is still ongoing. But this graph shows the mean difference between either vet sales, medicine bin, and farm records, and the gold standard. And where the value is positive, that's an underestimation of use. So as you can see, most of these methods did underestimate um, use. However, with the vet sales, teat sealant use and injectable non steroidals were overestimated. Um, as you can see from this, the vet sales data has the, the lowest number of overestimation. All of the standard deviations are quite large, so they do all cross zero, which means they can all over or underestimate. But um, from the preliminary results, it seems that vet sales data is the most accurate way to measure use on farm, far more so than medicine bins, and particularly far more so than farm records, because some farms weren't keeping any records at all. So in conclusion, veterinary sales data is the best measure for on-farm use, but it is subject to a time lag. Um, so everything that's bought within a year isn't necessarily used in that year. It might be used in the next year or the year after or 16 years away. Um, medicine record quality varied hugely between farms. So on farm, some farms, it was great. On some farms, they didn't have any records at all. So it's, you know, we need to improve that before we can use that data. And medicine waste bin use... Um, yeah, pharma compliance was really variable, and I think that's probably where that fell down with the accuracy. Uh, thank you very much, and does anyone have any questions, I guess? Yeah. Is there a question?